Hello, I'm Paul Peterson, and welcome to Aging Well in L.A. Today we're at the beautiful gardens of Santa Monica to bring you some new and innovative information. One is called Age Looks at Aging. And wait till you see what some of our seniors are doing with cameras. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'd like to introduce you to a new friend of mine, Brian Braff. Brian, thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. Thanks it's for inviting treat. me. I, uh, full disclosure, the program that you're going to talk to us about today, it, I think is just one of the most innovative programs for seniors I've heard in the last few years. So what is Age Looks at Aging? Age Looks at Aging is a project that actually started here at the Gardens of Santa Monica mm -hmm. and another assisted living community in Santa Monica, uh, where we created an opportunity for older adults to express their own view of aging through photography, interviews, and writing. Wow, so you just walked in and after explaining, just hand them a camera? Didn't quite work that easily. <laughs> I tell some of those stories. Uh, <laughs> many of the residents, uh, you have to understand that the average age of the participants in this project was around 90. Wow. And many of them had never taken a picture. And they didn't, if they had, they didn't know digital cameras. In fact, one woman wanted to know what she was going to do with the film. <laughs> so they had to be trained in the cameras sure. and, and they had to be trained in how to use a little audio recorder mm -hmm. because they were doing interviews of themselves. So they basically had to be trained to do what they were going to do. How do I take a picture? How do I actually express myself in a picture? How do I do an interview? Um, so there was a lot of coaching that preceded right. their being able to do this successfully. So what surprised you about those initial photographs that, that you suddenly found yourself looking at? The brilliance of, of the expression. I did not have such high expectations. Um, the, once the people understood what it was that we were trying to accomplish, they express, expressed themselves so beautifully. And I'm a professional photographer. I could not have gotten a lot of the photos they took. Isn't that something? Is it because they saw things differently or they focused in on something that you, as a younger man, wouldn't have focused on? They are the world they were shooting. They were able to capture that world in a way that I wouldn't have even understood it. Uh, and these were also their personal expressions. And mm -hmm. some of the things that happened, I, I knew, for instance, in so, that some people's hands shake. So I was expecting that there would be some shake. Yes. What I didn't get was how absolutely expressive that was of aging. Yes. They weren't trying to express something. It just got expressed. Wow. That's wonderful. But there. This has been a voyage of discovery for many of your participants. I, isn't it, the camera can be like an armament almost and, and buoy you up when you go into a new social setting. So can you share with us like Florence's story, how suddenly the camera allowed her to re-engage? Florence, uh, Florence is extraordinary. Uh, but Florence had a lot of concerns about engaging in the project. She wanted something to get her re-engaged with the world. Mm -hmm. She was very upset about being in a home. She didn't know what her place was. But she was actually in this home and afraid to go outside the walls. Wow. She was on a cane. She was uh, vulnerable. And she, but she wanted to do something. So she needed to talk about what the project was. Once she understood, she started taking pictures and she put her cane in every picture as an artistic device. Wow. And within a short period of time, she got rid of the cane and left the walls and went walking. She was afraid to cross Ocean Avenue because cars move very fast. She started to cross Ocean Avenue and she took her camera everywhere with her. And she got re-engaged in college, uh, yeah. re-engaged in life. And it was with the camera. Now, how old happened. was she when she started? 91. 91. Don't you ever think you can't move forward? You can. 91. 
Well, she also, Florence, we're speaking of now, has a tremendous gift for the written word. And the spoken word. And I, yeah, I mean, she's uh, Florence did everything. Woman. Florence chose to do interviews. She mm. was brilliant at that. But Florence's perhaps biggest gift in her photos are stunning is that Florence speaks in perfect paragraphs, not just perfect <laughs> sentences. And her words are totally poetic. You know, this is a perfect time for us to look at some of these images we're talking about. So sit back and enjoy some of the pictures that Age Looks at Aging have created. Jonathan, how does it feel to watch your mother in whatever stage she's at to observe the aging process in her? It gives me cause for hope that in my own life I will be as active and engaged and dynamic as my mother is at age 90 and that I'm proud of her and her ability to cope with the changes in her own life and to remain engaged in both uh, her own world of very interesting uh, influences as well as engaged with me and my family. Uh, I have great reason to be hopeful. Gerald, what brings you here to the senior house, Ocean's? <laughs> uh, I hadn't, didn't have any place else to go. I don't, I don't pay any attention to age. I'd rather forget that I'm crumbling. I'd rather, you know, go ahead and be as active as I can. Well, you I feel young, actually. I think you'll agree those are some pretty powerful images. Brian, the nice thing about a, a good idea is that you can replicate it. Everybody can adopt it. How can people find out more about this pro program? Where should they go? What's the website address? We have a website uh, that is almost completed now. It's mm -hmm. our second website, and this is a social media website. Right. And people can find it at www.agelooksataging.org. Okay, agelooksataging.org. And all spelled out, lowercase, of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and you create some, some tapes, and we can call them leadership tapes, but... Uh, you can actually download or access you explaining the program to people. That's correct. We actually have training videos where people can learn how to use a camera, <laughs> how to express themselves with a camera, how to do an interview, various uh, training uh, videos. But also we're creating a, and it's been filmed already, a leader training DVD or MP3. I'm not sure what format it'll be <laughs> available in. But it actually is designed to teach anyone anywhere in the world how to run this project. I see. Uh, so our goal is to have this run worldwide uh, in any kind of a community, a senior center, an assisted living home, or even a private community. Well, you have shared with me that one of the first things you learned is that don't stifle these older people. They will surprise you with what they come up with. Yes. And I have to admit, I was inauthentic. The first time I walked into this particular community, I saw somebody walking with a walker slowly and was concerned with whether she could participate fully. And then I realized that was completely inauthentic because I was denying her any possibility at all. So I had to give that up. And what I got was that I realized they're full of possibility and they want to express themselves. Yeah. You know what I love, Brent? You're a professional photographer, so you would know the difference. Uh, uh, with these things. Now, in, in just a few minutes, we're going to actually have Florence sit down with us and you'll get a chance to meet a really special woman. Um, we'll be right back with Aging Well in L.A. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Kaiser, board certified family physician and specialist in geriatric medicine. Welcome to the Empowered Patient. We have a very special guest today, Fran Phillips. So now for our viewers at home, grab a pen, grab a pad of paper, because Fran's going to give us some great tips how to, make, how to make the most out of your health care visit, not to be afraid to get a second opinion when you need it, knowing that you're the boss and what you need to do. So get that pen and get ready to write down some great tips from Fran here and uh, get the most out of your health, tips that could help you live longer and better. How are you doing, Fran? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. you. So tell me, Fran, what is it that you think seniors need to know about taking charge of their health and being more active in their health care? Always go for a second opinion, sometimes a third. 
uh, some of my friends say, oh, you may hurt the doctor's feelings. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, I hear that all the time. I mean, we're not talking about a car with some minor body work here. I mean, this is our health. Well, I even go and get a car opinions on cars, <laughs> so certainly I'm going to take care of myself so and my husband. Right, right, right. Tell us about that experience of getting a second opinion and even a third. Well, uh, Jerry went to a doctor and he said, you need another angioplasty on your leg. And uh, Jerry went to his rheumatologist and the rheumatologist called Jerry one night and said, I've called that doctor twice and hasn't returned my call. And he wanted to discuss the problem with the doctor who suggested the angioplasty. And I went to see that doctor on Monday. And he said, well, what does he want to talk to me about? I said, well, why don't you call and find out? And I said to Jerry, we're not going to use this doctor. You don't have to go under anesthesia for nothing. So when you found that this doctor was unresponsive, you were disappointed. And that brought up a red flag that right. this doctor wouldn't communicate with your other doctor, wasn't responsive. Right. So what did you do? I asked who was the top vascular doctor in the city. I went to see him with Jerry, with Jerry, and he said, you do not need an operation. So then you went to a second doctor, and this doctor had talked with your primary doctor, reviewed the records, went through all the information. Then you sat down together and were able to make an informed decision. Yes, just... and they all agreed Jerry did not need an operation. And you were insistent on getting a second opinion. Right. Absolutely. You have Absolutely. to do that. And if you don't, you're making a very big mistake for yourself. So, Fran, tell me, what did you get out of reading this booklet, Talking With Your Doctor? You have to excuse me, but it comes with age. Summary making decisions with your doctor. Ask about different treatments. Are there any risks associated with the treatment? How soon should treatment start? How long will it last? Are there old, other treatments available? How much will the treatment cost? Will my insurance cover it? <laughs> Ask about prevention. We have to think about prevention as an option. And right. these are all ways that we can be more active in our own health care, right. take charge of our health such that we can have better outcomes and really live longer yeah. and better. Well, like exercise. It's very important. I walk up to five miles a day. And that has done a lot, great deal for me because I have scoliosis. And the doctor said to me, who's known me all my life, said, I thought you would be in a wheelchair by now. And Fran, thanks so much for bringing up exercise. We can't talk about that enough on this show. We're going to have to do future segments on physical activity. Absolutely, staying active uh, is a critical part of healthy aging. Fran, thank you so much for joining us on it, The Empowered Patient. It's Always a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. You're doing a wonderful job. And really, read this book, Talk With Your Doctor. It is so important for your health, and it is free. So make the call. It's important. I'm empowered, and I'm taking charge of my health. Moving is so much of who we are. It's easy to take it for granted. Multiple sclerosis stops people from moving. We exist to make sure it doesn't. Join the movement, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society at nationalmssociety.org. Buddy, pull over! Pull to the right! Don't you know, red lights and sirens mean pull to the right! In an emergency, seconds count. So when you drive, pay attention, or else... Save it, buddy. The ball call. Welcome back to Aging Well in L.A. And now you get to meet the person we've been talking about. Meet Florence Horn. Florence, welcome to our show. It's so good of you to come and join us. Thank you. Tell me what you thought when this crazy guy handed you a camera. Did you think, oh, I can do this? Or were you hesitant? 
No, I didn't think I could do it. As a matter of fact, my first introduction to the project, I was very skeptical. I greeted it with very mild interest. Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew there was something about it that set it apart from any other kind of activity I could possibly participate in. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, I knew that it was going to touch something very creative. The, the project was in a de developmental stage. Yes. A and so it required a little soul searching for what the project could be like. And in, the, in my attempt to figure out whether I had a place in the project, it made me think a great deal about my personal process of aging. And it gave me a creative spark to examine in, in a new medium, mm -hmm. something that I was not familiar with. I had many thoughts about my aging process, but this was the first time that something allowed me to express myself in a new way in, in, on a very large issue. Well, once you focused on the idea of putting the cane in each photo, it, it really kind of anchored you, uh, I think. Uh, well, I, I was post-surgical, mm -hmm. and I was trying to find my way back. Uh, and in using the cane, it, the cane became a symbol for my instability, mm -hmm. my feelings of unsteadiness, my need to find a new balance in my life okay. so that so that where I was emotionally I was also physically in the same place it's funny how those things mirror yes, each do. other <laughs> and, and they affect each other yeah. and they are sometimes the reason for a great new challenge I I did find it very challenging to even figure out what it is I might do. And you mean like a lesson you wanted to share or a, a, a perspective? It, it, the issues were so large that I couldn't, I couldn't get a handle on what my personal vision was. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. That's good. And in searching for that, I, I needed to experiment. And the camera that was I was completely unfamiliar with camera work, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, when Brian said just point and shoot, <laughs> uh, that I found to be a very expansive idea, a fabulous way to experiment, just point and shoot. Yep, then you could store lots of photos and, in and, that camera. And, and that was a new experience for me, storing yeah. lots of photos. Great, great. Brian, is this a... This is not unique with the people who have come into the program, is it? That they, uh, It's a door opener. Uh, for everyone, it was a unique experience, and they all experienced it in their own way. Yes. But yes, um, I found that many of the people found that the camera was a window into the world and that they could move through that window into the world. Mm -hmm. It empowered them. Uh, Florence has talked about how it, it had her engaging with people that she wasn't engaged with before right. because of that opportunity. There's a tape recorder involved here too, so you, you want to capture other people's words, obviously. Was that a challenge to you at first? Well, I, I realized that I'm not the center of the, of the presentation, or the center of the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm part of it. I found that there were many people who were uh, curious, who were also uh, not in a position to be active participants, mm -hmm. but I felt that their voice had to be recorded. Mm -hmm. The fact that they were being interviewed, being recorded, gave them a sense of purpose. They felt they were part of a, a, an, a a, a purposeful project. Well, the, there is a historical value 
in all of this. So much, so, so many of our young people today uh, don't accord older people the respect they deserve just for making it to 90. And when you were 91 when you started this? Well, I, I, found, it, I found that to be the, the most, uh, uh, the reason I needed to do the project. I, I found that I, I wanted to express the, the right we have as aging um, individuals the right and the force to be engaged and respected in society. Now, I'm with you on that. Brian, over my shoulder is what you consider the kind of the signature piece of, of Age Looks at Aging. Yes. Can you walk us through not only this picture, but some of your favorites that, that have occurred sure. over time? This one uh, was taken by uh, Bernie and Lillian Sachs. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie was a medical doctor. Uh, who lived in independent living in this community. He took this photo and I immediately loved it. Yeah. But I particularly loved it for a couple of things. Number one, those are the hands of people who've been married for 69 years. Wow. Uh, and they're an inspiration. There's actually a funny story that goes with this because when I arrived here, there was a story going around that one of them had to be feeble because they were always holding hands. And so whoever that was the feeble one was being supported by the other one. And I actually asked them about this rumor, and, and I said, why do you hold hands? And Bernie looked at me and he said, we've been holding hands for 69 years. Why should we stop now? <laughs> what a lovely story. Now tell us about some of the others that you have, over time, picked out as favorites. Sure. Well, Florence has taken a couple of uh, other photos that are very important to the project. Mm -hmm. uh, one is of a woman holding a magnifying yes, glass. Yes, I know that one. And I actually look at that as almost a literal interpretation of age looking <laughs> at aging. Through yeah. her glasses and through the magnifying mm -hmm. glass, it's beautiful. And Florence took another one that I think could be hanging in any great art gallery, and it's a photo of a path through the trees. And it's dark and it's somber and it's very expressive. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a photo of two dancers taken by Fania Spielberg. It's joyful, it's delightful. Um, we had a participant named Lillian Berlin. She was our oldest. She was 95 years old. Wow. And I knew when I started the project that some people's hands would shake. Mm -hmm. Lillian was on a walker and had Parkinson's disease, and she would not not participate. She insisted on participating and expressing her life. And her photos do shake. What I didn't know when I started the project is how beautiful those photos would be at expressing her life. So there's, for instance, a photo of a piano player that is deeply moving to me. Wow. And I would like to say just a little bit more about the photo over your shoulder, because also included is a photo they took of a hand-tinted photo when they got married at the age of 20 at Cornell University. <laughs> and when you compare this photo to these two beautiful young people, it's, it's even more moving. Wow. And you had another picture that you wanted to reference. Yes, it's another one taken by uh, Dr. Sachs, and it's a photograph of two sets of hearing aids and a little dish that says, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up in a household. Grandpa Burr had the hearing aid, the old kind, where you wore the packet on your chest, and uh, he could tune us all out anytime he wanted to. Florence, I want to thank you so much for joining us. You are a wonderful advertisement for what I think is a great program. Brian, thank you. Thank you for Thanks sharing so much all this. For this. Give me the website again. www.agelooksataging.org. Mm -hmm. uh, agelooksataging.org. Well, we're going to take a little break to segue into Caregiver Corner. And you're going to want to listen to this one. It's pretty interesting. Today we're talking about caregiver stress. If you find yourself as the primary person taking responsibility for another person's activities of daily living, for example, preparing meals, helping the person get dressed and groomed, helping them with bathing and toileting needs, or helping them move from one place to another, then you are a family caregiver. There are many lovely things about being a caregiver. However, oftentimes, being a family caregiver can slowly inch up to the levels of high stress. Regardless of whether you're a family caregiver taking on these tasks from a sense of responsibility or you're doing it from a loving place in your heart or a combination of both, caregiver stress is a reality that cannot 
and should not be ignored. Signs of caregiver stress include denial about the reality of the situation, anger that treatments are not working the way you'd like to see them work, social withdrawal in that you're not going out to see friends or be with family or other activities that were once fun, anxiety levels about facing another day and what the future holds, depression, which can start to break your spirit and affect your ability to cope, or irritability, which then makes you react in different and negative ways. And health problems begin to take their toll, both physically and mentally. Signs of caregiver stress include denial about the reality of the situation, anger that perhaps the treatments aren't working the way you thought they would, social withdrawal from family, friends, and avoiding things that used to be fun, anxiety levels about facing another day and what the future holds. Depression can begin to break your spirit and affects your ability to cope. Irritability leads to moodiness and triggers negative responses and reactions. Health problems begin to take their toll, both mentally and physically, on family caregivers. Being aware of and acknowledging these signs of stress are important. So that is why we are reminding you that caring for the caregiver is also important. If the family caregiver fails, then what? Who's going to step in with caregiving? So let's talk about how to relieve some of the stresses in family caregiving. Create a family network of support, including friends. Learn about the medical condition of the person you are caring for. Seek available patient and family services through community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, senior centers, disease-specific organizations like the Alzheimer's Association, Heart Association, American Diabetes, etc. Call the City of Los Angeles Department of Aging for information and referrals. And there are many more resources out there that you can learn about. Being informed is a great way to minimize stress. Other ways of reducing caregiver stress include asking for clarification when you don't understand something. Find a local support group to learn more about options and resources. Fellow caregivers are a great source of support, information, and resources. Remember to give yourself credit for what you're doing. It's okay to periodically make a mistake. You learn from it. When you feel your stress levels rising, remember to step away from the situation for a few minutes. Take deep breaths to bring fresh oxygen into your bloodstream and to your brain, and then go back and take care of the matter at hand. Remember, caring for the caregiver is important too. The project handed me a camera that allowed me to look at many things that were close to me in my environment but that I had not carefully looked at. And in using that medium, I allowed a lot more influences to come into my life. I had the open door because I carried a camera and carried a recorder and it made it easier for me to interact with other people than if I were to pursue them without the um, supervision of the project.